as times change, people change, songs change. One thing that I've noticed is that a lot of people now have forgot to look at things globally. This next song is about thinking globally. A lot of times when shit gets hard and motherfuckers are just trying to worry about eating, they forget to worry about the rest of the shit that's happening. This way we're not going to have another Hitler or another slave trade or another atrocity in this country. This song is called The New Morality. Go read a book about someplace not near you. Let's go. <laughs> God bless. Thank you for coming down to this show as well. I don't know how long we're going to be doing this shit. Get as long as I can take it. I love playing these shows, but it brings me back to a time in my life when I was super unhappy. I'm shit. Oh my God, speaking of being unhappy. Hey, I want to get this bad love for Fahrenheit 451. I thought you guys were a little mean to those guys.
organizer. It was organized by John Joseph of the hardcore band Both Worlds, whose original group, the Tainted Crow Mags, reunited for the gig. It went like this. Hardcore scene has always pulled together to help each other, and now we're even taking it to the next level by helping uh, homeless people who we don't even necessarily know and who don't even listen to hardcore music. So it's just basically we want to help everybody. <laughs> These shows are like, you know, they come around once in a while, you know, and it, it's really good to be here for it. This is the stuff that Legends are made of. It's not like, you know, any of these bands sell a million records and stuff. This is like more personal, spiritual, I guess you would say. That Hardcore for Hunger benefit raised some $12,000 to buy food for people living on New York City streets. Um, this one, I think we all know why we're here. Believe me, all of us thank everyone for coming and showing what friendship's about. This would, uh, we're going to play a couple songs for you. I want to thank Sigvid all for letting us jump up here. And all the bands we play today. This one's, uh, this one's a little song about friendship. <laughs> Yeah. 
this song about people who don't know what it's like to be a real friend. So it's called Etu Brute.
girl power? Hey, somebody check back there for stepping on something, because Charlie's, uh, Charlie's on empty. A lot of guys. You know what? Just stage that amongst yourselves. I'll be back in a second. You know, mosh it up, uh, do the slam bands and... for the bees, so that's the stuff. This one uh, is, is actually an old Wars Don't Cover song that uh, they... Uh, what? Uh, Wally was correcting me. This is, this is a seven second song and... Uh, well, let me just give it a second because I was out of town when a lot of this happened. I just wanted to just mention that I was one of those guys that always uh, took care of the little guys and uh, made us feel welcome, taught us that no one is fucking old school forever. We all got to start somewhere. You're not born fucking straight edge or skinhead or anything. You got to accept people for what they are. Holly wants it. Yeah. And rabies, like um, the name of the song is I'm going to stay young until I die. Rabies, I don't know if you heard this song before, but he's one of the few people I know that lived up to the, t the message of this song. So, think of him.
but it was our first tour ever with the Sparrow Brothers Keeper. We played at the this is a showcase down the street. Showplace down the street. Uh, I love you guys out there. Thank you so much. We're finishing up uh, East Coast tour, very short one. But uh, I'm glad we could come out to Buffalo. This is our third time here. We had a couple of crazy things happen to us on this tour. But everything, every show has been great, and we're working through it. We played, we're supposed to play in Toronto the other night, and incident occurred, so when we showed up, they had told us, well, it's supposed to be over at midnight, and then we get there, and it's over at five, and we get there at seven, so you can see our dilemma. And then we uh, went to go eat, and then we go back to our van, we find out the back of the van has been broken into, and four guitars are gone, and all kinds of shit. Missing bags, numerous video cameras, things like that. So, we got fucking cold jack there. So, but uh, we got merchandise. So we got, got windbreakers and like CDs and LPs. So whatever you can do, it would be great. Winging it from here. Thanks to BK for the equipment usage and everything else. Thanks a lot for having us here. We're gonna play a new one. Hopefully, record an EP this next year. This year, actually, sorry. So you should say next year. Who's up for Steve Titus?
the OT. It's only called virtue. Blood.
We believe it. Always staying young. Always feeling young. As you get up in the years, you start to realize that uh, I don't know if I want to, uh, I don't know if I'm ready for all this stuff. This song is called Minus Red. <laughs> I think that's a good thing for these teenagers. <laughs> okay, what if I also told you that these same young people feel so strongly about their ideas that they're willing to tattoo themselves, shave their heads, even resort to physical violence just to get their message across? That's exactly what the members of an underground youth movement called Straight Edge are doing. And even if you haven't heard of this group, and I'm going to be honest with you folks, I've never heard of it myself. Chances are that your son or daughter might have heard of it, and it's something that we're going to learn about in this hour. Let's take a look at this tape to begin with. It's just horrible in my eyes that so many people turn towards drugs and alcohol as a way of coping with life. I think it's weak. I think it's pathetic. All the innocent people that die in drive-bys, that sort of thing. Uh, all the kids who are hurt because of alcoholic parents. It's just... I abhor it. Straight Edge is a movement against drugs, alcohol, tobacco, so on and so forth. The significance of tattoos is that Straight Edge is a commitment for life, and tattoos are with you for the rest of your life. And therefore, it's just a good way to show your commitment to the movement. If I sell out, then I'm going to have to look in the mirror every day and see my Straight Edge tattoos and know that I'm just a sellout and that I'm a scum, a piece of dirt. I did something new today. I shaved my head. It's time for me to have a new haircut, something that actually fit my personality. Most all the bands I listen to are Straight Edge. I'll go see a band who isn't Straight Edge, but a lot of times there are a bunch of, like, stoners there and it almost always ends up in a fight. This whole society is just so pro-drugs and alcohol. It just kind of like doesn't leave much room for us, so we kind of have to do what we can within our own little group. I think that people who are drug and alcohol free are superior. I personally think I am better than everyone else because I am not that weak. We have a superior lifestyle, and you're just a waste of flesh, to put it bluntly and they're willing to fight for their cause. You're also going to hear from some former Straight Edge members who say that the positive message of Straight Edge in their words is all lost because of the violence. But I've been to more than one show where someone's just been drinking a beer and they've gotten beat down oh, for that. Yeah. But first, I'd like you to meet three Straight Edge members. There's Ron and Ben from Columbus, Ohio, and also joining us is Bridget from Phoenix, Arizona. Now, one of the things when I first met you, I couldn't get over the tattoos. Show me the tattoos, because you have them. You even have straight edge on your on your neck. Yeah. Tell me about your tattoos. Go on, start there. Okay, um, well, I've got my hands X'd up, which is a symbol for straight edge, the X, and I've got straight edge across my throat, and drug-free, and drug-free here, and it's pretty much, you know, something I really believe in, so, and I like tattoos, so they kind of went hand in hand, you know. The X on the, the yeah. hand, where does that come from? Well, uh, like, 
a lot of times in clubs they mark underage drinkers or underage kids that can't drink with an X on their hand. So it just got came from that, you know, mm -hmm. people that can't drink, kind of just took it as a symbol. And there are lots of girls in this movement as well, I take it. There's not as many girls as there is boys, but it's getting to be, I mean, girls are more, getting to be more involved in it. Mm -hmm. How violent is this group? myself I don't think there's a lot of violence involved there is to some point as far as you know if people are going to get in our faces about the fact that they do do drugs and they do drink if they're going to blow smoke at us or you know call us names or whatever then I mean sometimes it does escalate but we I myself do not you know promote violence I don't just mm -hmm. you know fight people for yeah. no reason mm -hmm. the movement isn't, isn't about violence exactly I mean I don't even really consider myself to be militant I mean, I am to a certain extent, but it's not like I'm just going to see somebody drinking a beer and go beat them up. Mm -hmm. But, like, a lot of times it shows kids think it's funny to, like, blow smoke in our faces because we don't do it. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's justified. To beat somebody up. Right, but the violence thing is blown way out of proportion. Well, this is what Ron says. At a concert, if a guy lights up a joint, I'll take him down and punish him. If a guy is smoking a cigarette, I'll kick it out of his hand. Oh, That's yeah. not violent? That's and you say, oh, yeah. Definitely. You're part of the movement, too. What's yeah. your name? I'm Denny Fox, and his brother. You're his brother. Yeah. And so you actually, tell me how, how, what reaction you have. You see somebody smoking at a concert, drinking like a beer? Most of the concerts we go to are... Yeah. Most of the concerts we go to are straight edge concerts, and there'll be guys there that'll come to it smoking pot knowing it's a straight edge concert. So if they do that, that's disrespecting us, and we'll beat them up. <laughs> and you'll beat them up. Yeah. But is that the way to, to, that's to solve it? That's definitely the way to do it, because they know what they're doing is wrong, and we know what, what we're doing is for the good. Ours is to help society, not to sit by and watch it go down the drain. But it's helping society, and most people agree with you. I mean, most people agree with your anti-drug movement, your anti-smoking, and all those things that we're concerned about teenagers. But to beat people up because of your belief, isn't that kind of barbaric? It might be in some people's eyes, but you have to be in our, our situation. And we go through, uh, well, if you look around you, the way, the way society's going downhill due to drugs. Mm. So that's why we take our hard stance. We, we, we see it pretty clearly in our lives. No. So suppose you hurt somebody at one of these concerts. Is that justified because they were drinking a beer? If they come up, somebody's drinking a beer, getting in my face, they're drunk, then, then I'm definitely, I'll fight them. What is this Courage Crew you have on? Is this part of the Straight Edge movement too? Yeah. Um, but just to say something about drinking a beer while we hurt somebody drinking a beer, what if somebody gets drunk at a concert and comes by and hits one of my family members in a car wreck and they die? You know, so, I mean, we're talk we're taking that away from them, you know. If they stop drinking, we're not going to have to worry about people telling yeah. my seven-year-old sister in a car wreck or my mother or my father. So what you're saying is you're setting an example of people who even smoke a cigarette. Isn't that their choice? Well, when you look at it, sometimes the, um, violence is sometimes is the only necessary means, means necessary. I mean, if you... You, you can talk to people and never, I've never seen a fight just start originally out of that, but... Mm -hmm. Y'all sound like a group of good guy gang members. Yeah. Gang uh, members? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is almost like gang... What do you say up here? Like, hold on, stand up. No matter what you're standing for, violence is not the way to go. Mm. Well, violence is reality. Violence, there's violence everywhere. I don't like violence, but it's a fact of life, and it's something that... Sometimes you have to engage, and sometimes it's justified. Mm. Some people say your movement is going too far. MTV News Unfiltered was the very first national television show to uncover this so-called straight-edge movement. Many of us don't know about it, and you're going to learn a lot more about it during this hour. MTV dubbed straight-edge members the self-appointed stormtroopers of sober living. Well, I've never heard anybody say that. That was MTV. Up next, we're also going to hear from some former members who say that Straight Edge is nothing but a narrow-minded gang of confused kids. Some people who were in it are going to come and testify that what you're doing could be wrong. We'll continue the conversation and learn a lot about Straight Edge during this hour on Rolanda. It's called MTV Unfiltered because I saw the piece they aired on Straight Edge. It portrayed them as the perfect alternative for not doing drugs. But it's a different story, a lot more violent. Every mother and every child deserve quality medical care, especially during pregnancy and childbirth. Tragically, mistakes do happen. Do you have a child with a disability? Have you asked yourself, why did it happen to my child? And who will take care of my child when I'm gone? Call now. A lawyer and medical staff will review your case for free. You'll get answers, honest answers, and the legal advice you need. 
Isn't it time you had all the answers? Cleveland, oh, 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 what a city. From the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum to Jacob's Field of Dreams, Cleveland's one hot town. Hot Buckeye for your Cleveland card. Good for discounts all over town. Get a break. Get the card. Call 1 800 Buckeye. They say that we're Nazis because we're so closed minded and that we're racist. We don't hate anybody for the color of skin. That's something you're born with. Drugs and alcohol. It's something that you choose to do. You brought it on yourself. And we're talking about what some consider to be a growing youth movement. It's called Straight Edge. And many of, I think most of the people in the audience today admitted that we've never heard of this, but we're learning about it. It's a group that is of young people who are so against smoking and drinking and drugging and even sometimes eating meat that they are taking, some, in some cases, violent measures just to show their protest. My next guests say that all those Straight Edge members talk of being positive role models. In reality, they say they're intolerant hate mongers. I want to welcome Ryan and Matt, who are from Midville, Utah, and Chris there, who's from Denver, Colorado. Now, how do you... Welcome, you guys. Absolutely. Hate mongers, tough guys. Where does your experience come with, with Straight Edge? Well, um, first of all, we're called, uh, what is it, what did you call it? Uh, sellouts. sellouts. Okay, go ahead, call us Sellouts. I was straight edge for 20 years. Now you are. Now you are. Yeah, you if, if you're not now, you never were. You know what? You can't, it's not a trend you can take yeah, off next yeah, week. Never were. It's not a, I can't, I can't take this okay, off and not be straight edge anymore. Well, let's hear Chris's story, because clearly y'all don't like people honestly, who used there's to there's be in the group. That these guys followed somewhere, somewhere along the line. They made up a rule book yeah, for straight edge. Somebody has to. There's no such thing. There's not a rule book. It's a positive commitment you make for yourself. It doesn't involve your life. It's a personal thing. Where? You Where can't you say used that? to be straight at. Where's... You, what if I don't... You know what? I'm not straight edge anymore, and I used to be straight edge, yeah. and I used to beat people down, Lose and it. I used to... Wait a minute, let's go back to the beating people down. And under what circumstances would you beat somebody down, and what would they be doing? I don't know, man. They would show up at, just like what they said, uh, show up at straight edge parties or straight edge shows and just, you, you know, get in your face or whatever. But that's not the case. We beat them up because they were there, not because they were getting in our face. Well, that's and that's you. what that's they you. do. That's, that's you. what you guys do. That's you. That you know me. You know what I do. I'm I know straight edge. I'm 27 edge. years old. I know straight I've been straight edge for a long time. It's How long? Like you said, there's I've been, no I've been straight for a long time. We all have different personalities. Well, we're not all. I mean, you can't just stereotype us as one big it's, thing. It's not what you guys are talking about being drug free. It's what's coming along. You know, with with the it. violence all comes and with. It's, it's coming in the name. People think it's straight edge. They think, you know, they want to duck. They think fun. they're going to get hit. Fun. You know what? Well, that's that's positive. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The the pendulum is going so far one way. It's going so far one way with all the youth culture and embracing drugs and alcohol that sometimes violence does have to be used. Yeah, but what good. is violence solved? You go to I don't know. You go to a concert I don't know. and well, it, can it, I talk? Let him complete a thought. Let him complete a thought. You go to a show and blow smoke in my talk. face and I punch you. You ain't gonna blow smoke That's in my face. Where are you? Okay, hold on. Where are you? Thank you. I'm not gonna go to a show and blow a smoke in straight edge kids, kids' faces because I know they don't want to do that. But I've been to more than one show where someone's just been drinking a beer and they've gotten beat down oh for that. Yeah. See, but so hold on that. You You're talking about me like I'm, like I'm with everybody. Well, you guys are representing the straight edge movement and this is yeah. how I see the straight edge movement. So well, you just say? deal with it. All I know is it seems to me like like violence is the main focus here and to me that's not what straight edge means i've seen a lot of violence i'm not straight edge i am not straight edge i don't well, drink you know what? Where we I, can I, I have the mic here go ahead okay and then i'll let you speak I, I have gone to a lot of shows i've seen a lot of fights but in all honesty i've seen very few fights that were started from from just nothing but a difference of beliefs as far as 
one drinks, one doesn't, there's a fight. But I, why do you I'm, have to fight? I mean, so what somebody drinks a beer? You don't have because to. It's not, someone, because, violence doesn't because someone, always happen. This is a, it's like, a, it's a movement. Because and, and someone like him walks in covered with tattoos or any of these guys, and instantly someone thinks that they're trying to make a statement like they're a tough guy, and they want to play up to that and see exactly how tough they are. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of fights that I thought were unreasonable. I have. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've seen him provoked so many times, and it's so unreal. I've been on both sides. I've been on the opposing end, and I've been on the receiving end, and mm -hmm. I'm not even straight edge. So I've seen it from both sides. I'm not saying that not one person here on this side has a valid point. The I'm just saying... Mm -hmm. I'm just saying well, that there's too much focusing on the violence, and nobody's yeah. hearing the message. Okay, so give me the message. Give me the message. Exactly. Tell us what the message is before anybody gets so wrapped up in the violence, even though we're going to continue discussing that. But tell us what the point is that you want America to hear, especially the young people. We live in a society that's so sick that when someone like River Phoenix overdoses on drugs, he's a hero. He becomes a martyr. I think that's wrong. I think we need to take a different direction. I think we need to, to get rid of all the drugs, all the alcohol, and then maybe we can get somewhere as a country and as a world. Mm -hmm. Straight edge is a, straight edge is a movement, and with any movement, there's going to be it's 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 like a, it wants to be a revolution. Now, when, well, well, hold on. When, when the slaves were freed, did any bloodshed come out from that? Right. People died for that. Your movement to the violence from us. All right, the slavery and drugs and alcohol. I, I don't Let see that. Let me take a quick break and let's come back and finish this discussion. Some might say that the straight edge movement is a radical solution to what what you pointed out are some very serious problems. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. Lots of problems facing young people today. But the question that's going to be continuously asked of you guys is: Is violence and prejudice accepted now? You're going to have to explain that because, unfortunately, when movements happen, it is the little negative things that do get blown out of proportion. But when it comes to violence, that's something that affects us all. When we come back, we're going to get a mother's perspective. What do you do when your kid joins a movement like this? We'll talk to her right after this. Straight edge on the game, but if one straight edge kid gets in a fight, I get in a fight, and that's the way it should be. movement in the United States among young people called straight edge and while you might not have heard about it we're learning an awful lot about it they've been accused of doing everything from violent acts just to get other young people to stop smoking stop drinking stop doing drugs um, and they're quick to defend their position when there are those and I'm gonna say Ron here you go again I think it's noble to take down a drug dealer they deserve to be killed I've rolled up on drug dealers and taken them down. My group, the Courage Crew, and you see a lot of the young people in our audience today wearing this t-shirt, will beat people down for using drugs or smoking. People say, you know, that's not the way to do it. We've got a lot of people in the audience who are saying that, that violence isn't the way. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as drug dealers go, I think the death penalty should be instilled for drug dealers. None of us also are speaking for everyone involved in straight edge. We're just speaking for ourselves. We all have different personalities and different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. We just all happen to be part of the same movement. But you also know it's those few bad apples in any group that ruin the whole movement because there are those who do believe that your movement is good. It's just the violence that... But the, even uh, if I'm not as militant as a lot of my friends are, they're still my friends, and I'm going to back them up, even if I don't necessarily believe that it kind of goes too far sometimes. that's why the never stop. I'm still back You guys up. are just sell-out punk. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, you guys feel bad about you yourself. You guys calling me a yeah, sell-out. You don't know me. You don't know anything about me. Hold on. You guys came up here saying you don't know me, but you came up here. anything. Exactly. You came up here saying, yeah, you this, you that. You don't know me either. So why are you putting all your sin and not where you come from? You don't know anything. You're not. You're hold on. Hold on. Wait. Okay. Wait. No more calling any of us sellouts here. You don't know anything about me. Wait a minute. I'm straight edge. You can't get around it. You were never straight. Matt, hold on one second. Tell me what I'm straight as you not. He basically said, Matt, at one time, let's just back up first. Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. I was. Okay, let's just back up first. Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. I was straight edge. I am no longer a straight edge member. He was never a straight edge. Well, let's all find out. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. I was. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member? Matt, you were at one time a straight edge member. Why are you no longer a straight edge member
uh, it's when you get up there and start calling people, beating people up, uh, and getting in people's faces for disagreeing with your beliefs, however right you feel that your beliefs are. I don't care who it's you not are. You are not in a position upon other people. Okay, let me tell you about. You, you guys keep saying that it, it only happens when people get in your face. In Salt Lake, about two or three months ago, there was a straight edge show. Now, what's a, a straight edge show? A, a concert. There was a band. There was I don't, no I don't drinking, know the name no of the smoking, band. No smoking, no drugs. It was actually, it was it was actually in a bar. Mm -hmm. Straight edge. Ironic. You know, the, the, the show going on. Yeah, you know, inconsistencies okay. more than a few. Uh -huh. um, no, it's not. Why you act like such a punk saying that? Exactly. Oh, I'm how acting much? like a punk? Yes, Like exactly. you just said out there, how much alcohol what? do you think they sold that night? Well, let's just finish the story, because take me to this there bar was, where there's no drinking, there's, and what happened? Okay, there is a girl sitting against the wall, not talking to anyone, smoking a cigarette. Straight edge guy comes up to her, punches her in the face. She falls uh, to the ghoul. That's him. That's that's him. That's that's him. That's 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 him. That's 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 I wouldn't care if they were straight edge. You, if somebody came up, maybe he hit her. It doesn't matter. He, he he it has nothing to do with smoking. It's not about sex. Maybe he shouldn't have hit her, but it wasn't just about straight edge. Show it. It's not about straight edge. You could have just made that story Shane, let me introduce you so we can get your point. This is Shane and his mom. Excuse me for a second. This is Shane and his mom, Faye, who are joining us. Shane is a devoted member of straight edge. And Faye, I, I, you're the mom here. Shane, I'm going to let you finish. And then, Faye, I want to know what it's like having a kid in straight edge and if you're just as concerned about some of this, these violent issues as, as we are. Shane, you were saying something here. What, what were you trying to, what point were you trying to make? It's just that he's telling these stories. I mean, these could be fabricated stories and all these people are listening to it and understanding it and, like, believe in him. Okay, let's start with your story. Let's start all over here. Mm -hmm. You decided, how old are you, Shane? I'm 21. And you decided at what age to join straight edge? 19. And why did you decide to join? Because my life was going down the wrong path. Like what? And, like I was consist I was always going to parties, drinking, smoking pot, smoking cigarettes, and I'll admit it, I had a problem with it. And I knew that I couldn't just give up cigarettes or quit drinking for a while because I know that eventually it's it's easy just to go back because you can, you know, quit smoking for a while, but more times than not, you're going to go back. You know? Shane, let me ask you this, because a lot of people will join AA, or they will go to another different type of group to help them be, you know, to help them recover. How did, was it that you chose this particular group? What was it that sold you on straight edge? Because it was, I was having an extreme problem, so I decided to take extreme measures. Mm. How extreme are those measure, measures? We're going to continue talking about this. We're also going to talk to a man who says that he knows firsthand about what really goes on, so-called extreme measures by Straight Edge. He was at one of these shows, and he says he's got the scars from that show to prove it. Decided to pop down on a joint, you know? <laughs> and next thing we know, there's like 20 Straight Edgers around us. And they flashed me in the back. It's the re Straight edge is not for the masses, but what we're trying to reach is our fellow youth. The truth is, if you're smoking, if you're drinking, you're supporting corporations that really have no concern for you or your health, and they're out there after the almighty dollar. We want people to realize that basically they're being played for suckers. Hmm, we're talking today about the controversial youth movement called Straight Edge. And you were a little, you were touched by what you've been hearing today. What are you thinking? Well, I mean, I understand your concept about drinking and drug use because I don't want to come home and find one of my family members in a car wreck and so forth. But I agree with this woman. Violence is not the answer because what if one of your cousins or nephews or uncles were at the party and you didn't know them, but you decided to beat them up because they were drinking and smoking. Mm. Shane, talk a little bit about that because we were just hearing your story and your mom, Faye, is here too. You just told us a story about why you got involved in Straight Edge because you were having difficulties, making some wrong decisions, got involved too deeply in drugs, and we're looking for some folks around you who were about the same thing that you were, and that's about right. being clean. But ladies like this and some of the other folks in the audience are saying, but violence, is that the way to push your point? I, I will sit down and talk with anybody here about my beliefs. 
I'll educate anybody about my beliefs because I think it's right. right. Down deep in my soul, I am violent. right. It's not that violent. Okay. Faye, you're a mom. There. Your mom, like so many moms, watching this show. And, and you're supporting your son Shane here, is that right? Yes. Tell us about the straight edge movement from a mother's perspective. Talk to us about this. Well, like Shane said, he, he was doing a lot of things he shouldn't have been doing. He, w he would come in late when he had school the next day. I would even go to the point where I would take him to school, drop him off at one door, and he'd be out the other door just because he was... He was too tired from being out all night. He he was drinking and smoking pot, hanging out with the wrong people. Um, and I'm I'm totally I am so glad that he is straight edge. So do you believe straight edge saved your son? Yes, I do. Chris, I, what's wrong with that? You know, the school issue is great that you take him to school and drop him off, and maybe he's doing better in school or whatever. Probably 95% of the straightest kids that I grew up with didn't even finish the ninth grade. I think it's wonderful that he got into straight edge and that helped save him from the path he was going down. And I have a lot of respect for him. No if, one cares about your respect. You're a sellout. Well, now, this I care about I his respect, so let's take one at a time here, okay? Yeah. Matt, finish, that's, and go on. That, that's cool. You know, I respect those beliefs, but it's when you get these people uh, that, ha that take their beliefs and force them down other people's throats. I don't have a problem with straight edge. Well, wait a minute. How do you, how do you join the straight edge mu movement? I mean, is there initiation? Is there something? Heart. It's yeah. in your heart and you in your head. You don't have to be a part of a group to be straight edge. From the audience. From the audience here. The problem with what you guys are hearing right now from these guys and the messages that are being conveyed here is that straight edge is a violent movement. That's not correct. What we do 99% of the time is we hang out with each other and we have a good time living our lives and doing what we want to do. We have no problem with any other people. It, it, what, the problem comes when I get up here and my beliefs get prostituted out to be nothing more than a violent street gang. That's where... That's where the problem is, and that people don't understand. But there's more education, there's more power in education than there's been. And I will attempt to educate anyone before I will beat them up, because that is where the true strength lies. All these guys here didn't all grow up knowing that drug-free is the right way. They had to be taught that. And being taught that is right, what's right and what I try to do every day in my life. That is why I'm straight edge, and that's why I live that. With you that it is a positive thing. I mean, even let's face it, folks. If there is a movement to teach our kids not to do drugs and not to smoke and not to drink, it is worth a second thought. Maybe we are blowing up the, the violent part too much. We're going to continue talking about this right after this break. Boy, I tell you, I, all these kids with these tattoos, I don't see how you do it. But I'm sitting here looking at uh, a straight edge member. He's got across his fingers here, drug free. And the X, which symbolizes what? The drug free and no That's drinking, right. that type of thing. Boy, oh boy. And you've got the X's too. I understand that you have tattoos all over your body. You've got courage on your neck. Can I see it? Sure. Not that I want you to do a strip show, but I do want to see how your commitment to this thing. Come on, guys. Let's see what you got going on here. Oh, my goodness. What does that say? That says, to die is gain, to die in honor's name. And this is the big symbol. And you have what on the back? My goodness, what is it? Who is this guy? <laughs> it's just a big gargoyle. It's original art by a friend of mine. He's got the X on his hand. It's just a really powerful And the tattoo. X That's here as well. My good, you guys really, re I mean, you know something? You're going to be 90 years old, and that thing's still going to be on your back. But this is something... And I'll still be straight edge. And you'll still be straight edge. And that's something you really believe. Why is it that you have such a tough time with people who say, I don't want to be part of that movement anymore? Well, the, that, the thing is that it's not a tough time with people that don't want to be part of the movement anymore. Like, during break, we asked them if, like, since they stopped calling themselves straight edge, if they had done alcohol or drugs since then, and all three of them said yes. Uh, the problem isn't with people not wanting to be a part of the movement because you can still be drug free and not be straight edge mm -hmm. but when you when you take away from straight edge and you you incriminate yourself by doing these things that you once preached against then that's what makes you they're up here denouncing yeah. straight edge that's no, the problem. No, 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 I do not denounce yeah, you already are you said it's about violence and it is probably 50 percent of my friends are still straight edge and you know what? And I love them, and I care about them, and I do They don't care about you because they didn't care when you sold out. They do. That's you being prejudiced against me. You know what? I'm not prejudiced.
Bridges against you. You already said that I was wrong about violence. Yeah. You don't like me anymore. You're not prejudiced? From the audience. Hypocrite. It doesn't make any sense to me. Violence is violence. Right? Because it is. It's not the same thing. 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 Um, to say, oh yeah, we don't drink, don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't smoke, whatever, right? But you're choosing to use that as an issue to... Educate other people. No, you're fit. I thought that yeah, in, in, in the tape, in the tape earlier on... Listen, lady, listen to the lady. In the tape earlier on, I in heard, oh, we're better than all of you because blah, 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 blah. That's, that's an extremist thing. That's, that's discrimination. And that was it. How are you educating me when everything I say you tell me, shut up, so out? From, well, from the audience now, from the audience. I admire everything you all are doing. However, I do resent the statement earlier that the war on slavery is in any way connected with the war on aggression. Well, I, 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 I really do need to clarify that. Let it, let it be finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drugs. But I think, but I think that when you compare slave, now listen, young young man, when you compare slavery of this nation to slavery of drugs, one is by choice what and I'm one is, is not. So don't don't go there. <laughs> oh Instead of being completely objective, if I was at any bar or any concert and I saw any of you hit a woman or another man for no reason and to me it would look like no reason but the person was smoking no a cigarette reason. the that person was smoking happen. a cigarette yeah. let him finish his point happen. you said and you punched the person would. first of all to me it looks like assault and battery that doesn't look anything like you're doing anything positive mm. from my point that, of view that's fine i mean that's fine so can like, straight edge get their positive message out without resorting to violence uh, we're going to talk about that next. What other ways can you do it? What other ways we can you make a, a million point? Ways. There's a million ways. Let's to talk about some of those other million ways after this. We'll be back in a minute. When you open a can, you get... to meet Tom. Tom is 14 and he says one of the most important decisions he ever made in his life, he made at 13 and that decision was what? To come straight edge. To become straight edge. This is Shane's younger brother and Faye's youngest son and uh, you decided to, do, to join for what reason? You were just following your big brother. Well, I mean I seen how Shane was when he was out partying and I thought that was it was just stupid. So I decided to be straight edge. To be straight edge. Now, all these folks talking about violence and stuff, is that true? I haven't seen very many fights. I mean, mm -hmm. they might have, but I haven't ever seen any, because I haven't been to very many shows. So I've been like six. Faye, when your kid comes home and says, Mom, I'm joining Straight Edge. I'm 13 years old. Did that send fear or, or, or happiness through you? Well, I was very happy. After, after I found out exactly what it was, because you hear so many things, I know when I... When I first heard Straight Edge, because there was a piece in the paper several years before, well, quite a few years before this, and it sounded totally terrible, like they were dragging little old ladies out in the street because they had a beer and were beating them up. So <laughs> that, that totally scared me. But when Because there have also been uh, reports in the paper of even fur salons being supposedly being blown up by yeah, straight edge people. Can I jump in here real quick? Uh, in, she thinks she's a block away. Let, let her finish and then I'll let you jump in, sure. But when I, when I figured out what it was about and asked exactly what he believed in and what, why he wanted to believe that, I totally support him. I support Shane, Ron, Amy. I support my, all of my children. Matt, you wanted to make a point. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the fur uh, things. Uh, last week, I believe, in Salt Lake, a company called the Fur Breeders Co-op was bombed. Uh, I brought, I brought a new. Hold on, straight ahead. I, I brought a newspaper article with me. I brought a newspaper article with me that quotes the police as saying. 
their suspects are in the straight edge movement. So the they allegedly got right. involved. Yeah, yeah, we right. Well, we weren't there and we don't know. And at this point, there hasn't been a trial. But be it, you better believe there are going to be a lot of folks studying that no, case. Just to see. Like about let me bring in, before as we continue our conversation, let me bring in Dr. Bonnie Maslin. She's a New York City psychologist. And she says that even if ideas are really powerful, they don't need to be executed with power. And you join us now. Bonnie, you know, after watching the show and listening to opposing views, uh, we give enough information for people to go and do their own research. But I can best believe that if a kid comes home and says, Mom, I want to be a part of Straight Edge, as young as maybe Tom at 13, there is that ambiguity. There's that, yes, my kid is making good decisions, but that's also like, but to be part of a group that is, even, even if it's a little bit, it's still tainted with acts of violence. What do you, how do you handle that as a well, family? Well, I think that parents and your child is being sucked down the tube, I think that probably the relief of feeling as if their life is saved is the first and foremost thing. You know, you have to be alive first. That's the first order of business. And I suspect that for a parent like you, just knowing that your child is going to be there alive and well the next is something for which you'll be eternally grateful. Is that fair to say? Yes. Well, you know how many mothers are facing this? I think this is a larger problem. We are frightening the hell out of our children. Mm. Being a teenager now, I was not as scared. I mean, I had problems. I had zips. That was my biggest problem. <laughs> I didn't think that maybe a decision that I could make could be a terminal death decision. I think we have a nation of frightened children and I think that when we are frightened, we often look for solutions, perhaps solutions that are even extreme. Now think about this. There are some people here that are holding on very tight to ideas. Why do you hold on tight to something? Think about if you're floating, if you're floating in a sea and, and you're, you know, the ship has just gone down and there's a piece of wood, you're going to hold tight because your life depends on it. And I think what we have to think about, even if it isn't the perfect solution, we have to respect and empathize that there are children here who are trying to find a solution to being terrified, and maybe they're holding on very tight, so tight that even the, any attempt to say, no, no, this isn't it, they can't let go. Probably there are so many people who also say that one of the things that, that, that we are not teaching our kids enough of is how to solve problems. And maybe if the problem is there are too many of us kids doing drugs and, and, and making poor decisions for our lives, how do we do this in a solution-finding way that is peaceful and so that we don't cause more problems than we have already? How do we solve these problems? Let's continue this talk after this. International Locator, the most successful locator company. Find almost anyone for $49.95. Call toll-free 1-800-368-FIND. Crunch and Munch. It's perfect whatever you're craving. Popcorn, peanut... ...able to, like, quote-unquote, be addiction is to stay one step ahead of it, and I do that by being straight edge. Hmm. Amy, you were... You had something that you wanted to say about all this. This really, to me, is insane. Everyone's talking over everyone else. Who, who is, uh, what kind of impression are these people making talking Amy, over everyone? Did you notice something? Because I noticed it. After I spoke, did you notice something about the, the direction of all the heads in this panel? They were all nodding in agreement. I, I was think nodding. That's it's I'm not what you're seeing here, what you're seeing here, oh, here's my heart is in this. Okay. Everyone's aggression because they're constantly being persecuted. I'm not saying that they're bearing the, all these problems and whatever. It's that everyone wants to prejudge and prejudge. When I first met Ron Fox, I was scared to death of him because of everything I had heard. You're calling a sellout. I didn't you call you a sellout. sellout. You are a sellout. I know. Don't no, say don't say you because you, I did not you say that. You are a sellout. You didn't call you one. Who aren't straight edge didn't. I mean, but straight edge kids did. And that's what we're talking about. You strong enough to say straight edge. To come 
come out behind your courage crew and say I can be straight edge without being I'm courage crew. Courage crew, man. Oh, now we're getting violent. Come on, you guys. No, no, no. <laughs> when you make some personal attack on me, when I'm hiding behind something, when this isn't a banner. This is in my heart. Okay, let me give you the first. Okay, hold on, hold on. It, it, excuse me. In my presence, there will not be inappropriate and unacceptable behavior. Now, let's start okay, by I'm teaching. Gonna, I'm, let us start. We're, we're going to set up oh, everything because you said so. Yeah, yeah. No, because you? I am. No, no, no. Respect, respect, hold on, respect. Hold on. Her, respect her here on the stage. I will respect yes, her, but this is about stage. I would like to know how much I, she really knows about stage. I am Nothing. what I know. I do know something that I can help about you with. Straight edge? I can tell you yeah. about how to talk about your ideas in a passionate way. I don't know a lot about you, absolutely. But I do know that you're doing a disservice if you have powerful ideas and you are passionate about them. There is a wonderful, passionate, and powerful way that you can make yourself heard and listened to and respected. But nobody here is letting you I'm get gonna, away from the violence. Club. I'm you going to. Anything like I want to help you do that. Let me do that. Can we do that right after this break? <laughs> We're going to look for solutions. We'll be back in a minute. this commercial break we've been watching Bonnie talking to some of the more outspoken members of Straight Edge and I'd like to know because because all of you you know there's one thing that's beautiful about being young and passionate and holding on to a dream and that is a passionate discussion about it but how do you do that so that the passion doesn't escalate into the violence that so many of us fear all right I know it seems remarkable but I do think in a one or two minute break we connected here and we understand something that's going to help at least this this person be more effective. So what we're going to do is we're going to have Benny, we're going to do like an instant replay, but we're going to have Benny talk. Yeah. This yeah. It's, it's going to be make you listen to. I want to help you. I, if you have a powerful and passionate idea, all right, it's not going to look as cool as standing up and menacing. You're right. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be cool because then it'll really be the right thing. It'll be harnessing the passion and the power and the brains that you have. And I promise you, I promise you it'll work. I promise you. I, I know you're, you're taking a big risk to do this with me. The risk of being you know, sort of the butt of people's joke here, but try it with me. I want you to tell him how angry he made you feel when he said those derogatory things about your group. What did he make you feel? Well, there's no reason to tell him what I felt because it's obvious. No, it isn't. Put it in words. It's not. You look menacing when you're angry. And when you look menacing, you're falling into the trap of looking like a violent gang instead of an intelligent young man who has damn good ideas about what he wants his life and the world to be like. Sasha, watch your language. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, stand up, stand up, though. Stand up. No, you can do this. And just say, you know, man, you didn't have to go there. And just, no. just See, what, take it what down you did, Sasha. What you did. Don't point. Just say. Just say it. I'm going to point at him because what he did, if he sat there and he assaulted everybody. I felt assaulted. Say, I felt assaulted. When? I know it sounds weird. It is weird. Trust me, it it's works. It's weird. It is go weird. And give him a big kiss. I felt it's my, it's a, what it might as well do. I felt you. No, no, no. I no. felt assaulted. I can't stand it when you assault something that I feel so passionate about. Is that a way of saying it? What would you say? That's well, not maybe you work with ignorant kids like that. No, this you're going to be listening. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nobody. See, that's why you get the wrong impression of really? like us. You're the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. This is they they are traitors. traitors. But we're not your enemy. You know something? You know something? You know something? One of the things, and, and you got to you got to admit, because you're still so young. You want to be a traitor. Who wants to be a traitor? Listen, okay. I don't want to be you with you guys. You're a possible star. Okay, and you know something, and there's so many of us depending on you to learn how to make this, this, this movement work. 
Well, we uh, need you to make it the work. Movement, all right, besides the violence thing you guys are covering, here is exactly what the movement is. You don't drink, smoke, or do drugs because that is all about complacency, apathy towards everything going on around you. Mm -hmm. Now, there are kids there into that are into violence. That's not those kids. That's not everybody. It's then y'all need to grab mind. those kids and stop them because we all need a movement like this. But we need to work on making it a positive movement for everybody. And you don't do that with prejudice and violence, okay? And we will keep learning about it. Keep learning about it. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.